Remember last time when we beat the British up so bad they bolted from the Pate and we biffed a tough boff lad named Felstoff, a real sad little specimen who had a voice to drive you mad and make Lahir sound bloody red? Well you better, because that victory was apparently cause for a very special celebration. The dolphins of Chinon came over and were demanding that we crown them as King of France. Now, we probably had a king out there already somewhere, but I wasn't going to start asking questions. Especially because if we made a dolphin the national leader, then that sets a strong precedent for letting any biologically alive bogan in. Meaning a multi-gender kill first and then kill the questioner's later psycho peasant who spoke only a strangely accented version of the language of our mortal enemies should be an easy sell later on. The main issue was that the flippant fucks wanted to be crowned in a place called Reims. With that sorted, we were able to go and live our dreams. <clears throat> our dreams. <coughs> oh, what the fuck was I thinking back then? Pun doesn't even work because it's actually pronounced Ram. So we must escort the Dauphin to Ram, where he can be properly crowned. Well, that explains why it's apparently being swarmed over by the ramrodgering Brits, which itself explains why the dolphins were being a pod of pissers for wanting their coronation over there. Yep, it was up to me to clear the place out, as well as a couple of other insignificant places while I was at it, because hey, I'm cheap labour, right? If you think immigrant workers do things cheap, you should see what happens when they start jumping the borders of timelines as well. So we set off to get it done, with the newly formed Grand Army of France behind me. Wait a sec, was it really only like 20 dudes? Well, I thought the narrator said, Dead France is returning to life. Our army swells with new recruits. How come every time people claim that my army has gained new recruits, I have to increase the magnification of my microscope to even see it? I'm 50% sure at this point that the dolphin overlords actually feed on human flesh and that this whole coronation was just an elaborate ruse to get a load of likely lads together into the same room ready for an interspecies predation party. But hey, maybe that sort of thing was normal back in the Cold War era. Or was it the Punic War era? Did we get the year yet? Oh no, just June 25th. Oh, maybe it means the 25th June. So it's 25 AD. Meaning that this is actually the, uh, the Jen Wu era. Deduction of the day, mates. Maybe I'm actually Sherlock Holmes, transported into the body of an Aussie, transported into the body of a frog bird. Ah, oh, who cares? Moving on. Like every battle so far, we were going to have to get across a river to find the Brits. But to start with, I had to move west to find a supposed military base I could use to organise everything. On the way, we encountered a few crappy campers from Britland, who, as we decapitated them, calmly noted, Joan of Arc is attacking our camp! And by blighty, I do believe my intestines have fallen out. Hardly called for, I say. Do not let her cross the river! Came a voice from Reims, somehow overhearing the whole affair and deciding to chip in with that stellar advice. True to it, the men didn't invite us across the river, but then again, they didn't really do anything. All it made me wonder is what the dirty Brits were doing out there in the fog of war that made them so nervous about me showing up. And given how publicly they administered their tea enemas, I shuddered to think of what horrors these guys considered worth keeping secret. Anyway, we got to the camp and found that actually it was just a load of topless guys squatting in the woods, waiting for us to show up before they actually built the thing. So we still basically had nothing and would have to wait until bloody 26 AD to catch up with the Brit Bongs. I sent a dude to investigate this legendary other side of the river and found one of the British occupied cities right there. I wanted to have a little look around, but my spine noped out when he spotted a squad of British knights waiting for action. We needed to prepare an army that had more men than you could fit in the back of an average hearse. The build-up was slightly interrupted by a few British pike pushers sneaking into my base before I finished trumping the borders up. They seemed very determined to destroy a tent that the topless guys from earlier had been living in. I'm not really sure why. Are you sure this will destroy the French war machine, Fairfax? Of course, of course, Costes. The General ordered us to make an intense attack. 
We'll just fight our way into these tents, and victory shall be ours. The general knows it well. He learned from Sir Falstoff, did you know? Oh uh, yes, no mouth Falstoff. Jolly good. Let's get medieval on this here canvas, then. Medieval? What's that? Oh, I say, I don't rightly know. It's only 25 AD, after all. No matter. On with the show. We finally got an army together and made our push towards the town of Chelon. Reims was outraged, calling out, Go arms! The French are trying to cross the river! I'm so outraged I almost drunk my tea by mistake. Now where's that rubber tube? First I wanted to take out those knights I'd spotted earlier. As I approached it turned out there were like five billion of them back there, rushing into my army from all sides for a right messy brawl that threatened to destroy my precious magical ram. I couldn't really tell what was happening, but we seemed to win one way or another. But that was just the bloody beginning of it, mates. Next came a wave not of rams, but of scorpion ballistas. Still stuff made out of sentient wood, but unlike rams, these lumber lads were bloodthirsty, shooting flaming bolts the size of a man into our ranks. We had to rush about, trying not to get turned into a self-cooking kebabo francais, dodging shots from a watchtower, killing the odd stray ram, and murdering orange dudes. We fought upstream towards where all the ballistas were coming from, scattering a massive crowd of Reem's cash gobblers on the way. But the stream of shit just kept going, with enemies and enemy buildings as far as the eye could see. I remembered that technically I was meant to be liberating these places, not destroying them, and so decided to review the little to-do list the dolphins had flipped at me before I left. It turned out all I needed to do was destroy pretty much the first building I'd seen in the town, and that would be enough. I don't know, I guess I expected liberation to just be killing the occupiers, not actually destroying the centre of the settlement. But hey, I'm new to this country, maybe the sweet liberation of death was preferable to actually being liberated by the French. Thinking about it like that, I uh, suddenly understand entirely. Unfortunately, my army had already got itself killed playing piss chase with all the shit around the place, so I had to prepare a second wave to fight its way in and get the goods. Now with the added annoyance of the Reem team showing up with their upgraded shit to shit on my shit until we knocked the shit out of them, Eventually, we rolled up old school with a load of vengeful trees on wheels to bring the Chelon town centre right down like I was meant to. Thud, 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 three rams in a tub, and who do you think they killed? The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, liberated from life, they'll be thrilled. Yes, the literal collapse of their civic administration may have come with its measure of dead Frenchies, but what can I say, that's just my style. With Chalon reconquered, deconquered, and tree conquered, we had to find something else to kill. While preparing the next wave of Patriot Pikes with low expectance for life, the bloody Reims Rangers showed up, pulling the classic British "My bow's longer than your bow" shtick. Yeah, well, I don't even have a bow. Oh wait, is that? Uh, oh, whatever. Basically, we rushed around trying to kill these archers all over the place to clear the way in. But it was hard going, because I couldn't be asked to build cavalry, so more units that are weak against archers it is. How about another round of halberdiers? Most of the battle was actually taking place back in Chalon, where all the troops I was mustering were on a motherfucking vendetta against the local houses. They were determined to liberate Chelon into oblivion like it was fucking Baghdad in 2003, which, by my current calculations, it probably wasn't. I could have stopped them, but why well, ruin the fun? And besides, destroying that crap was making my score go up. And you know what they say about a guy with a big score? Or was it a girl with a big score? Well, whatever, I'm both now, so I'll win either way again. Checkmate, atheists. Soon I faced two simultaneous annoyances. Kinda like being in the shit house while you're really hungry. And don't try to solve both at the same time. If you want to know why, ask my mate Gestric Gav. Some orange guys had got into my camp when my jackery squad cut down the forest blocking the way in. Nice one, mates. They basically wandered around my tents for a bit and then got killed. Same as the last wave. I told them to go home and play Far Cry 3 to learn certain key definitions to help them out with that. Meanwhile, the staff of Reem's Hardwood Logging Co. got pissed about the fact I put a guard tower right next to their supply lines and started killing them all, and their trade union happened to have a whole fuck sack full of catapults at its disposal. Teaming up with the biggest bows this side of Papa John's house, they rained death on my poor piles of wood and stone. 
My army was actually on its way to wreck the hive of orange guys, but had to turn back and cancel that excitement to deal with this little trade dispute, like I was writing the scripts to the Phantom Menace. Somehow though, once the Brit shits leveled my defences, they just decided that the day's work was done and it was time to pull a mannequin challenge for the rest of their lives. Seeing this, I thought, well, fuck it. If they're not going to make the effort to attack, I'm not going to make the effort to defend. Back to killing the orange dudes. Take this shitty script and rewrite it entirely to have the opening be a rampaging army of blue guys going to town on some suckers. Basically, put the ending of Avatar at the start of Star Wars and all the problems just disappear. I guarantee it. The attack was a success, saving Troy from the evil British and getting all the sweet, sweet unobtainium to myself. Oh wait, was the thing that they were struggling to obtain in Avatar actually called unobtainium? Or was that just some joke? Oh, for fuck's sake. I mean, just call it plot pointium if you're gonna go down that road. Oh sweet, Code Gear Season 3. Now, we had some problems with the locals, who were so pissed that we didn't liberate them enough that they got half naked and started shanking my guys up, then danced around as we ranged javelins on them. Don't liberate as normally get a kiss from a pretty girl, not a knife to the stomach and a dance from a topless gigolo. Those World War II newsreels sure portrayed the recently freed French a little differently. Well, next up, the Brits decided that after a few weeks of meetings, negotiations and filibustering, that they would indeed bother to attack through the hole they've made in my wall. But there was one condition, apparently. It had to be an ironic attack. Thus, we saw a load of archers trying to shoot my archery range to pieces, one molecule at a time. I thought I had all the time in the world to bring up my army and kill them, but suddenly things got fucking serious. As well as the archers, they had loads of fucking trebuchets, giant shit throwers the size of buildings, with all the evil sentience of the rowdiest of rems and the stingiest of scorpions. I needed to kill those counterweighted chuck-cucks pronto, but there were two problems. First, the remnants of my walls made it hard to move, and second, an escalating number of British catapults appeared to start raining great balls of fire over everything. The probability of it being Baghdad in 2003 was rising sharply. I desperately tried to keep my guys moving and grooving like some real smooth operators, dodging the death blobs and taking out the various kinds of death blob dispensers at the same time, even ordering my walls to self-destruct, which they somehow did, in order to get at the enemy easier. We fought to some kind of stalemate, with both sides getting mostly wrecked, so once again I had to wait a while to get more popa troopers together. Once I did, I started my own irony offensive, by sending my rams to ram ram, smashing my way in and beginning the search for their town centre. Again, I was meant to be liberating the place, so I didn't want to ram everything down. If I could just destroy that one building, the British mind control beams would wear off, and ram would be free. But of course, within the belly of the beast was not only another 46 quadrillion longbowmen, but that number squared of fucking merciless catapults. Thus began a deadly multi-wave assault where I tried to survive long enough to make a dent in the enemy before those fucking napalm nudges wrecked all hands on deck. Let me tell you, a lot of man meat was cooked up that day. Alright mates, this is a, a somber hymn whatever to the many trillions of men who died trying to take that place. Was it Reims? Ram? I can't remember how you say it. Yeah, it doesn't really matter anyway. I barely in this one at all. Rolling through the fields, what's that? It's an onager. Shooting through my French, it looks like a harmonica. Wake up boys, look up, look down Balls of fire fall to the ground It's an artichoke Ripping you to pieces An artichoke They keep raining death on our men We should get out of here But I will keep attacking them with unlimited albedeers There is nothing you can do To survive it Crazy catapults Don't even need someone to drive it On a 
step up boys it's going down another wave rushes into town but there's an onager ripping you to pieces an onager what you see at the end of days is a sea of onagers in your way they are onagers ripping you to pieces Onagers I could use calf to kill that furniture But I'd rather spam even more skirmishes Onagers With this piece of Onagers War is hell with the catapult devil This is the worst damn way to do this level Cause Onagers Ripping me to pieces, honey juice. I guess the short version is uh, fuck honor juice. Finally, though, we destroyed our way through that death nest and it was proudly announced. Ah, has been liberated. Now the coronation of the Dauphin can proceed. Right Right after we finish murdering the locals and firing trebuchets at all the buildings, it's such fun! Once again there was some kind of victory parade, and once again there was a massive fuck you to everyone who just died trying to take this city using only wooden sticks. Of course you have cannons! Of course you don't mention it until the battle is over! Of course I'm gonna find where you keep the keys to your fucking space-based ion cannon and eviscerate this whole fucking country once I'm done! So basically, there was some party to celebrate a dolphin being made King of France, nothing too special. I did spot another dolphin disguised as a human. Look at this chick, that shoulder is so far away from her neck, there's room for an extra head or two on that body. You can see how fucking ashamed I was of the whole thing, sulking in the background, while the only one paying attention to me is this mushroom growing out of a human body with four arms that could stop a fucking freight train and a weird claw-like hand pulling off the world's least convenient glass holding technique. There ain't no party like a Frenchy party, but for all the wrong fucking reasons, mate. I'll see you next time.